everyone, Larry Bailey here with Awesome Technologies, Inc. Bringing you another weekly newsletter. This is going to be for the week of March 25th, 2024 in review. This information is brought to you from MBS Highway. Uh, head over to mbshighway.com for your subscription. You get this information directly to you. It's also brought to you by Awesome Technologies, Inc. You can find out more information at awesometechinc.com. You should really check out the settings analyzer. It lets you see every single setting that is available inside of Encompass that ICE at Mortgage Technology exposes and is searchable. Um, check it out for your own personal demo. It only comes out to a couple of hundred dollars a month on an annual contract, and it is by far worth every single penny. Also, make sure you sign up for the Mastering Encompass as an admin uh, course and get certified and get live support every day to make sure your Encompass runs exactly as you want it to and learn how. So here's the stories for this week of March 25th, 2024 in review. <clears throat> Progress in the Fed's preferred inflation measure has stalled while the latest data on appreciation and signed contracts show strength in the housing sector. Here are the headlines. Uh, first one is, uh, first story is progress stalls on inflation. The next story is mixed, uh, media mixed up about mix of new home sales. Next story is more signed contracts despite higher rates. The next story is higher trend in home price continues. And the last story is jobless claims story remains the same. So if you're seeing this on screen, great. That means you're already at mortgage.community. If you're listening to this on podcast, thank you very much. Make sure you head over to mortgage.community. <clears throat> Check out the space where we have all of these uh, replays set up. So here's that first story. And the source of this information is from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. <clears throat> Progress stalls on inflation. So February's personal consumption expenditures, that's PCE, showed that the headline inflation rose 0.3% from January, with the year-over-year -year reading up from 2.4% to 2.5%. That core PCE, which is the Fed's preferred method that strips out volatile food and energy prices, that rose by 0.3%. <clears throat> the year-over-year -year reading fell from 29 to 2.8%, pushing this important metric one step closer to that uh, target uh, that the Fed has of 2%. It's also the lowest level it's been in almost three years. The bottom line here, gang, is the Fed has been working hard to tame inflation. We all know that Fed's been raising <clears throat> its overnight uh, rate uh, for a borrowing between banks, which is known as the Fed funds rate. They raised that 11 times since March of 22 through July of 23. And as a reminder, this was done intentionally to try and slow down the economy, make everything more expensive, and uh, try to reduce the pressure on inflation and uh, reduce the pressure on prices. So the Fed wants to see annual inflation measured by that core PCE. They want to see it return to that 2% target. And though they've indicated they won't, quote, wait till it gets 2% to cut rates, while the latest 2.8% core PCE reading is much lower than the 2022 peak of 5.6%, progress has been slowing. So the question remains, when will the Fed think inflation uh, has progressed low enough for them to start cutting Fed funds rate later this year? The consensus is still three rate cuts this year. <clears throat> Originally, it was thought they were going to start around July, maybe August, September. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, everybody will be waiting with bated breath. Okay, the next story is media mixed up about mix of new home sales. So there's a great graphic on here brought to you from the U.S. Census Bureau and HUD. And uh, what we saw was after two consecutive months of gains, new home sales, which is measured by signed contracts on new homes, that inched down from point, down 0.3 percent from January to February. And while the media tried to put a negative spin on the report, I don't know, is that true? I have no idea. Um, home sales remaining stable in February shows some strength given that rates moved higher compared to January. Plus, sales were also 5.9 percent higher than 2023 as the persistent shortage of previously owned homes for sale continued to fuel demands for new construction. So here's the bottom line. Again, <clears throat> if you read this thing, it says the media, I don't know who the media is, whatever. So some people are also pointing to the decline of median home prices, which was down 3.5% from January and 7.6% from a year ago. Um, yeah, that's really not really what's going on here. So remember, median means <clears throat> the, the middle, right? So home prices are not falling 7.6% um, in general. Yes, there's some homes that are falling, but here's the reality. <clears throat> home, home 
uh, builders are cutting their prices. And this is contributing to this. So, um, so in fact, 24% of builders reported slicing prices in March, down from 36% who sliced them in December. And this was the lowest share since July per the National Association of Home Builders. The median home price represents the mid price of sales, meaning it's influenced by the mix of sales in any given month. So all this is saying is really that the 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 um, the value that went down was because the more homes sold at lower prices, and that brought this median sales price down. Look in your own neighborhood. Look at what homes are selling for. You tell me if you think prices are falling. We'll leave it at that. Here's the next story: more signed contracts despite higher rates. So now. That last story, we were talking about new construction. Now we're talking about homes that were previously owned. So used housing, so to speak. So um, this information is sourced from the National Association of Realtors. So pending home sales rose 1.6% from January to February per the National Association of Realtors, also known as NAR. And it's just a one more sign of underlying strength in the housing market given February's uptick in interest rates for mortgages. This report measures signed contracts on existing homes, making it an important forward-looking indicator for closings on these homes, um, which are measured in the existing home sales report. Bottom line here is NAR's chief economist, Lawrence Young, noted that the modest sales growth, quote, shows slow and steady progress from the lows of late last year, close quote. He added that a, quote, steady rise in inventory, close quote, is also expected this year, which is good news for buyers as we approach the busy uh, spring season. I don't know about your neighborhood, but I live in South Jersey, like I've said many times, and I'm seeing for sale signs pop up everywhere. So, you know, I guess in a normal market, whatever the heck that means anymore, um, maybe it would look normal. But, um, you know, this time last year, not even close. So many more homes for sale. Kudos to people who wanted to move. Keeps the whole thing moving. Bravo. Um, let's keep going. So talking about homes for sale, here's the next story, and that's higher trend in home prices continues. There's a great graphic on here from S&P Dow Jones Index. And uh, the case uh, Schiller Home Price Index, which is considered the, quote, gold standard, close quote, for appreciation, showed home prices nationwide rose 0.4% from December to January after seasonal adjustment. Home values in January were also 6% higher than a year earlier, with the S&P DJI's head of commodities, Brian D. Luke, explaining that this was the, quote, fastest annual rate since 2022, close quote. He added that all cities in their composite index saw annual price increases for the second straight month. The Federal Housing Finance Agency's house price index did report a slight 0.1% decline in home value from December to January, but... All of last year, it was 6.3% higher than the previous year. Note that FHFA does not include cash buyers or loans that are in excess of the conforming limits, which in some markets is like over a million bucks. So these are like super high loan amounts um, that are not included in the FHFA. Also, if you're buying house cash, you don't need financing. So again, there's, you're not involved with the Federal Housing, housing Finance Agency's database. Um, bottom line here. Last year was a strong one for appreciation. We all know it. We've all seen it. Uh, and the first reports for 2024 show that trend is continuing. Home values are expected to remain supported this year as buyers' a demand will still outpace tight supply. These indexes show that homeownership continues to provide opportunities uh, for build, building wealth through real estate. Uh, dude across the street lived, bought it in 2017 for 425, selling it for 675. What, wait, seven years later? Not bad. Not too shabby. Next story is jobless claims story remains the same. So initial jobless claims fell slightly in the latest week with 210,000 people filing for unemployment benefits for the very first time. And uh, this was a, a decline of 2,000 from the previous week. Continuing claims rose about uh, by 24,000 with 1.819 million people still receiving benefits after filing their initial claim. Bottom line here, gang, is initial jobless claims have hovered between 200,000 and 213,000 each week since the start of February, which is surprisingly low given the high profile layoff announcements that we've seen in the media. Meanwhile, continuing claims, maybe you say the news, I don't know. Meanwhile, continuing claims are trending higher compared to a year ago, showing that it's becoming harder for some people to find new employment once they're let go. Hey, gang, here is the national uh, coffee 
Cake Day. It's happening April 7th. Thanks to this scrumptious and easy uh, recipe courtesy of all recipes, you'll enjoy it. So here, this thing yields 15 servings. Here's what you do. You preheat, preheat your oven to 350 uh, Fahrenheit and grease and flour a 9 by 13 inch baking pan. You're going to make this streusel topping. That's the crumbly stuff. But you're going to combine a quarter cup all-purpose flour, two-thirds cup sugar, and one teaspoon of cinnamon into a medium bowl. You're going to cut in one quarter cup cold butter. Make sure that butter is cold, otherwise it won't crumble, until that mixture resembles coarse crumbs. And you're going to set that aside. In a large bowl, uh, separately, you're going to combine two cups all-purpose flour, three-quarter cup sugar, two teaspoons baking powder, and one-half teaspoon of salt. You're going to cut in one-half cup cold butter until mixture resembles coarse crumbs like you did the other thing. In a separate bowl, now you're going to whisk together one egg, three-quarter cup milk, and then stir in one-and-a-half teaspoons vanilla. You're going to pour that egg mixture bowl into the flour mixture bowl, and you're going to mix that until just moistened. Uh, lastly, you're going to spread that batter into the prepared pan. You're going to sprinkle with streusel topping. That's the first bowl you have. <laughs> Bake until a toothpick inserter comes out clean, usually around 25 to 30 minutes. Cool that thing and slice it up and enjoy. Here's what we're looking for this week. We have the labor sector, uh, the job. Um, you're going to have jobs all week. So on Tuesday, job openings come out. Check out to see what happens with that. Um, pirate, 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 private payrolls. Come out on Wednesday. Unemployment claims come out Thursday. And the big one, the big, big one is going to be Friday. Because that's non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. And you're going to see that move markets, guaranteed. Um, so that's it for now. My name is Larry Bailey with Awesome Technologies, Inc. You can always reach out to me using Larry at ATIHelps.com. Thanks very much for listening. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.